Hello, insiders. News flash time. First update is uh, let's talk about studio. So about 90% of all creators, basically everybody who still has that little escape hatch in the bottom left corner has been notified that by the end of this month, uh, general access to classic studio will be going away. For most of creators, even the top ones, it will be kind of a no-op because most people are already using uh, the new studio. There is a percentage of people who are really hesitant to use the new YouTube studio, and they click on that escape hatch the first second they can, and that escape hatch is just going away. So now is the time to get used to it. Some things that people have been concerned about that I want to kind of set you at ease is if you're like, whoa, 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 I need bulk uploads. Don't worry. Don't worry. Because what we're talking about is just that one link on the bottom left corner of YouTube studio with the little running guy that's going away. So when you do uploads, the link to classic uploads will remain if you need it for bulk uploads between us friends, native support for bulk uploads will be coming probably in about three ish weeks. So, um, you know, that'll be there built in. And then some people are saying, well, what about playlists? Like I always click on the playlist link in YouTube studio and it brings me to the main app where I manage my playlists. Uh, that's not going away. That's going to, that's going to remain there. And then some people are saying like, well, what about the uh, audio library? You know, that's still in classic. And I use that. That is also going to remain basically anything in YouTube studio that links to a piece of classic that isn't currently in YouTube Studio will remain until we have that native version. Oh, and speaking of the audio library, we have a little sneak peek, which I will share with you, a little screencast of what it might look like. So it's in Studio, and you can then filter by genre. You can then do a secondary filter by mood. You can play the song, but yeah, that's just a little sneak peek. So. Audio library is coming. In the meantime, until we have it completely done and tested, you can go to the old one. That's not going away until we have it replaced. Another thing is the new features eligibility tab. So as part of the YouTube studio improvements, we're redesigning the classic channel status and features page and introducing the new feature el eligibility tab in the channel settings window. And the goal is to offer creators a simpler, cleaner experience to quickly review feature access requirements and individual channel feature status. Next, oh, I think a lot of people are gonna be excited about this one. One of the big recent complaints about YouTube Studio is that, man, I can't see my public subscriber list in the new studio. Or they'll say, well, I found it, it's no longer on the left-hand side. It's in the studio channel dashboard. Uh, it's got this little card and I have to say, see more, but then I only see the last 28 days. So we heard you loud and clear. And so now you can see an expanded list of your public subscribers on the studio dashboard below the channel analytics card. So it'll be on the right-hand column under channel analytics. The list only shows subscribers have chosen to make their subscriptions public. And we need to be careful about that for privacy reasons. But when you click see all on the dashboard card, you can now view the public subscriber list over different time periods. Last seven, 2890, 365 days, or across the lifetime of your channel. You can also sort by subscriber count and date subscribed. So this was a top reported, uh, you know, complaint about YouTube Studio. So we're really happy that we were able to bring this in and it's now available on your dashboard. Give it a try. Let us know what you think. Next, every quarter, our team takes the top creator bugs or requests and fixes, tries to get through as many as possible over the course of a week. So we basically stop all work on everything else and say it's, it's a fix it week. We're going to focus on the top kind of opportunities to make Studio better. Um, based on customer feedback or little things that need to be tweaked. Well, we did it. And I wanted to summarize some of the things. There's too many to list them all, but let me just go through some. So the first fix it item was adding hover states for monetization and view on YouTube on the video list. So we added hover states like a month or so ago. People love them because you could go to 
comments and analytics and metadata editor from the video list and deep dive into that video level for those specific things. But people are saying, well, I can't get to monetization or I can't view on YouTube. Well, now you can. And so that should improve uh, navigation and discoverability. We also added a download action in the bulk action section in the video list. It was very heavily requested in the send feedback link. We updated the playlist selector behavior to address user feedback and match classics behavior where playlist changes to a video now apply immediately as a user checks a box. So thanks for everybody for calling that out. We also launched improved filtering and data presentation in the videos list. So has schedule filter, didn't show schedule premiere. So that's been fixed. We've made progress on bulk uploads. The number one feature request for the new upload flow, that is probably about three weeks away, maybe less, depends on how testing goes. We've also fixed the dialogue for bulk delete. Additional user confirmation is needed again because we found that some people were accidentally doing bulk deletes and it's like, oh, my videos are gone. And we've removed the HD indicator for upcoming live videos because it turned out that that indicator um, had some issues. And so we want to make sure we only have it when we know for sure. So those were some of the fix it updates. Next, update on monetization. So we recently talked about an increase in yellow icons on new uploads. So we launched an update to our automated systems that improves this issue. It reduces the number of yellow icons on new uploads by 30%. And the other exciting news is that the latest version of the automated system is a lot less likely to change its opinion and flip your video from green to yellow after the video was published. Now, as we said before, if you want to check the monetization status before making the video public, we highly, highly encourage you to upload the video as unlisted first. It may stay, still take like an hour or so, you want to play it safe, maybe two hours, for the video classification to stabilize. But after that period, the automated systems are much less likely to change their opinion and flip the icon from green to yellow. So after a couple of hours, if it's green, more likely to stay green. If the classification decision is a yellow icon, of course, you can appeal. And if you update the metadata of your video, like your title, thumbnail, or description, the icon color might flip. So if you're going to change the metadata on your video, we'd encourage you to do it as early as possible. And so if you're green and then you mess with the thumbnail and title and description, you'll want to check and make sure it stays green after a couple of hours because you know, it could affect the suitability of that video for advertising. Next, last week, we launched YouTube Kids Experience to 11 more countries in Latin America, Bolivia, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, Paraguay, and Uruguay. We plan to continue to expanding to more countries, including Greece, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Malta, and Turkey this month in hopes of reaching parity with YouTube.com this year. So if you have kids, YouTube kids will likely be coming to a country near you if we're not already there. Next, for those of you who use the adjust audio track feature that allows you to add a music track to your video, starting Feb 20, we'll be removing that feature on the YouTube mobile app for Android and iOS. However, it will still be available on the YouTube Studio desktop. Next, I just want to thank everybody for their comments uh, about comment settings in the last few videos. The team looked into it, and there is a bug. They are working on fixing it now. So at the moment, some comment settings may not be working. This is where, like, as an example, you may see stuff held in review that um, you know looks like it's from a while ago. Uh, we also put a notification in the known issues section of the YouTube Studio dashboard so you can stay up to date on the latest for the status of that bug. And that's it for this week. So hopefully this was useful. In the meantime, keep it real. Are you still here? Well, if you're waiting for the movie quote, we're not doing that anymore because I stopped watching movies. I have no time. But we are doing YouTube trivia, which I actually think people are more interested in than the movie quotes. So last week, the trivia question was, if you had a video 
that had high click-through rate and high average view duration relative to all of your previous videos, and you knew that there was a ton of viewer interest in this topic, but views were lower than your other videos, like what gives? What would be a potential explanation? And the answer was known by DIY Tech Bros. Basically, DIY Tech Bros was saying it probably has to do with uh, competition. And that is absolutely right. Basically, let's say you have a channel and normally your click-through rate is like 3% and your average view duration is like five minutes. And then you have this video where the click-through rate is 4% and average view duration is seven minutes. And you're like, whoa, higher click-through rate, higher average view duration. And let's say it's about a topic that you know everybody's really interested in, like the new iPhone 12 or 13 or whatever they're up to right now. But it has less views than your other videos. Like. You're like, well, what's going on? Tom said in Creator Insider, like CTR, AVD, audience demand. Well, the other factor is competition. So what happens is, let's say you upload that video. It's doing better than your other videos in CTR and AVD. And you know a lot of people are looking for that content. But another channel has the ultimate iPhone 12 review unboxing and it's getting like an 8% CTR and it has like a 12 minute AVD. If we see a, a viewer that is looking like they're looking for that content about iPhone 12, and we've got this video that's got an amazing click through rate, an amazing AVD, even though yours has a CTR and AVD that's better than typical for your channel, you're also in, you know, it's a market. And so that's a reason why you don't always get tons and tons of views, even if your CTR and AVD are looking strong. For sure, if you have weak CTR and weak AVD, you're unlikely to get a lot of views, but there actually might be situations where if the competition is so weak, we may say, wow, this is the best thing we have. So it's not always like higher AVD, high, higher CTR like guarantees views, but Generally, they uh, do correlate. If you want it to be really precise, it should be relative CTR and relative AVD, which is relative to all the other videos on YouTube that we could show about this topic to this audience. So congrats to DIY Tech Bros. Next trivia question. In the time it took you to watch this video, assuming it was at normal speed, how many hours of content were uploaded to YouTube. So from the moment this video started until right now, how many hours of video were uploaded to YouTube while you were watching this? And that will give you a little sense of how much competition there is. Um, a lot of people know, wow, you know, YouTube's this huge thing, like pretty much everybody goes to it on a regular basis. But we do have a lot of videos from amazing creators like you. How many? That is a question. How many hours in the time it took to get to this spot right now? Now you're saying, well, dude, he keeps saying this spot, this spot, this spot. So when I clap my hands, it'll be that spot. That spot, just when I clapped earlier. Okay, hope that was helpful. In the meantime, keep it real. See you guys next week.